All eyes will be on this car. Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi. So Kimi. It's Kimi. Kimi Raikkonen coming all the way from Finland, making his Cup Series debut here at Watkins Glen International. There are hundreds of protesters here in downtown Ithaca, all showing their support. This is the borough's water storage tank, and the solution to a hole in it was a stick. You are hearing that correctly. That is a stick from a tree branch sealed with an unknown sub. The special council meeting where a little over 70 people showed up. So many people showed up actually that they had to move it outside. As you can see, it's going on right now. And the outrage that the community felt there are no flights right now. It's very empty. I was here earlier today and the majority of passengers were not wearing a mask. Have a good cause or a good reason before putting up that eviction notice. All eyes now turn to King Charles. So what happens now, and, and we know nothing has been released formally, but when do you expect to see a coronation for the new king? Well, it usually... Good evening, I'm Rhea Child. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 5.30. Early voting has begun for New York's 23rd Congressional District right now, and especially here where we have truck drivers, farmers, first responders, all using diesel fuel as their main source of gas. Half of it is incentivizing doctors and, and other health care providers to come to this area. I think it's all of the above. Inflation is a hot button issue right now. It's impacting everyone. Tonight we are continuing to follow a story out of Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania, where the 600 person borough is facing violations from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, also known as the DEP. Residents in the community are outraged as this violation comes after a stick was used to plug a leak in their drinking water tank. I went to the Lawrenceville Water Facility to find out exactly what was going on. This is the borough's water storage tank, and the solution to a hole in it was a stick. You are hearing that correctly. That is a stick from a tree branch sealed with an unknown substance, plugging what the DEP is calling a bullet hole. When you plug a hole in a water tower, you have to have approval from DEP for the materials that you use. And a stick with epoxy is not one of them. At the most recent council meeting, residents were outraged at the poor maintenance of their drinking water facility. Uh, no, okay. don't tell me to hold it. Okay. This is right. my water. This is the water that we are drinking. In response, the man in charge of it, Council President Gordon Chilson, assured that this actually is their solution. Every, Every time. time that tank has been repaired, the guy repaired it, took a stick, put it in a hole. Just this Tuesday, footage sent to 18 News by a Lawrenceville resident shows the stick that had served as a plug since the end of June being replaced. No more leak. This is only the most recent revelation of the borough's insufficient upkeep of their water facility. My water was brown. My water shouldn't be brown. Um, you can smell chlorine so bad that it burns your nose. That's not normal. I refuse to drink Lawrenceville water. Because of these issues, many residents are denied free access to a basic human necessity. I won't drink it at all. Now I, I don't even give it to my animals. I have to give them all bottled water. I'm really aggravated because, I mean, we're trying to just get answers. But instead of answers, residents say Chilson deflects the questions by reciting the same phrases. His number one go to is, well, that's your opinion. opinion. No, that's not putting that's items on the agenda. Or show me proof. We could print out a thousand pages of material with proof, and it would still be our opinion. It's his way of getting around everything. Frustration also growing now with the DEP as this violation is only one of many issued over the past three years. We've had violation after violation, month after month after month. They need to do something so we can drink our water again. From your local election headquarters, just last week, Joe Simpolinski was elected to be the 23rd District's Special Election Congressman, serving out the rest of former Representative Tom Reed's term. But what is his story? I took a look into what many people don't realize was a very turbulent candidacy that even Sempolinski himself couldn't have been prepared for. For Joe Sempolinski, it has always been about serving the people of the Southern Tier. This is my home. You know, as I said, we're sitting in the city I was born in. Uh, this is the district I was raised in. And I wanted to serve the people in the district. That was very, very important to me. In July of 2021, Sembolinski announced his run for the 23rd congressional election. And it was going very, very well. I was getting a lot of support. 
And then the first map came down. Seven months into his campaign, New York's Democrat-led legislature put out a set of maps in January that left him with no district to run in. I didn't want to disrupt people that were already in office. I was looking to run for an open seat, and I said I wasn't going to run. The day those district lines were signed into law, a Republican-led group of voters filed a lawsuit against them, this setting off a domino sequence of events that would wind up with three months where New York's district lines were unknown, meaning three months where Sempelinski had no idea whether or not he was running. Each day it seemed like there was a new political bombshell that had dropped that fundamentally changed what was going on in western New York and southern Tier in the Finger Lakes politically. As Sempelinski is losing hope of running in this election, one day in early May, former Representative Tom Reed decides to resign, meaning a special election seat was open. And I was sitting in my office and I got a phone call and my life changed. Election day comes around and Sempelinski becomes the 23rd district special election congressman. The numbers were clear, yet for Sempelinski, it didn't feel real. It didn't become real until probably the next morning. And it, I think that is a product of ups and downs and stops and starts and hurry up and wait uh, that we have been dealing with uh, on our campaign. Even though this term is only four months, Sempelinski knows that this is only the beginning of his perpetual pursuit of serving the Southern Tier. Whether I'm an elected official or a staffer, whether it's federal or state, it's all the same. Uh, I just want to make the people that I love, my neighbors, my friends, the people of the Southern Tier, the people of the Finger Lakes, I want to make their lives better. And however I can do that, that's what's important. It has been six months now since Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, and there appears to be no end in sight. Some Ukrainians have been left with no choice but to leave their country. Many Ukrainians making their way to the U.S. and even here in the southern tier. I spoke to southern tier residents who are sponsoring Ukrainian refugees to find out more about their story. A family just like theirs, a husband, a wife, and three kids, similar in age, both of their youngest sons, just eight months old. But instead of living in Corning, New York, this family was fleeing Ukraine. It's really hard having three kids and making it through the day, but then thinking about everything they were going through on top of that. With kids our age, I just... I felt like, oh my gosh, you know, we have to do something. We have to make this work to, to get them here. 24 years ago, Michaela's husband, Bulazim, lived through a similar experience as an Albanian refugee during the Kosovo War. They are in the most vulnerable situation. Knowing at first hand, experiencing, you know, the refugee where you don't really know, like, when your next meal is going to be. You're constantly in a fear of something bad happening. Through the program Uniting for Ukraine, Michaela and Bulazim were able to sponsor the family's journey to Corning, but they say it really was a community effort. There are these two families here um, who provided a home for them to live in, um, food, and there's, there's a local church that has been donating um, a lot and had a little fund for them. The Ukrainian family declined to interview as they are still trying to process the move as well as the traumas from war. It'll take some time before this feels like home for them. Betsy Whedon says the Ukrainian refugee she's sponsoring has severe PTSD when planes fly overhead even months after the move. Uh, a lot of duck and cover. Um, a lot of, of physical trauma, physical shaking, total body reaction. It's, it's difficult. The hope for these refugees is to assimilate and find their footing in their new communities. To give her that opportunity to do something that brings her joy, that's, that's the next step that we're on. Michaela says she is in contact with them every couple of days, and their families meet almost every week, her son eagerly waiting the next one. Mom, yes, why didn't they come to the taco dinner last night? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs>